Why non-human creatures are so important in the Quran. The Quran, the holy book of Islam, is revered for its comprehensive guidance on all aspects of life. Among its many teachings, the Quran places significant emphasis on the natural world, including the diverse array of non-human creatures. These creatures, ranging from animals and plants to insects and celestial bodies, are not merely incidental mentions but hold profound symbolic, ethical, and ecological importance. They are integral to the Quranic narrative, offering lessons in morality, spirituality, and the interconnectedness of life. This exploration seeks to uncover why non-human creatures are so important in the Quran, delving into their roles and the wisdom they convey. The Quran, as a divine scripture, richly incorporates the natural world within its verses, providing not only spiritual guidance but also profound insights into the creatures that share our world. Animals, in particular, are frequently mentioned throughout the Quran, serving as symbols, signs, and lessons for humankind. The significance of animals in the Quran goes beyond their physical presence. They embody moral and spiritual teachings that are central to Islamic thought and practice. One of the most compelling stories involving animals is that of the Prophet Solomon, Suleiman, and the hoopoe bird, Hudhud. In Surah an the ant, the hoopoe plays a pivotal role in Solomon's kingdom. The bird's intelligence, loyalty, and keen observation lead to the discovery of the Queen of Sheba and her people, who were unaware of God's guidance. The hoopoe's mission highlights themes of knowledge, duty, and the importance of conveying God's message. This story illustrates how even a small creature can be an instrument of significant change and divine purpose, emphasizing the value of all beings, regardless of their size or status. Another significant narrative is the story of the she-camel sent to the people of Thamud as a sign from God. In Surah Ash-Shu'ara, the poets, and other chapters, the she-camel is presented as a miraculous sign and a test for the Thamud. The people are warned to respect the camel and allow her to graze freely. However, their disregard for this divine sign leads to their downfall. The she-camel symbolizes God's mercy and the consequences of human arrogance and disobedience. This story teaches the importance of respecting divine signs and the creatures through which they are manifested. In addition to these stories, the Quran frequently uses animals to draw moral and spiritual analogies. For instance, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, the mention of the cow in the context of a story involving the Israelites emphasizes obedience to God's commands. When God instructs the Israelites to sacrifice a cow, their hesitation and questioning illustrate a lack of faith and compliance. This narrative underscores the importance of unquestioning faith and the simplicity of following divine instructions, using the cow as a central figure to convey this lesson. Birds also hold significant symbolism in the Quran. In Surah Al-Mulk, the sovereignty, birds are mentioned as beings that rely on God for sustenance, teaching humans about trust in divine providence. The sight of birds flying effortlessly, supported by invisible forces, serves as a reminder of God's omnipotence and the intricate balance of creation. This imagery encourages believers to reflect on their own dependence on God and the unseen support that sustains all life. The Quran also highlights the moral qualities of animals. For example, in Surah Al-A'raf, the heights, the story of the dog in the tail of the people of the cave, Ashab al-Kaf, illustrates loyalty and faithfulness. The dog, by staying with the faithful youth in the cave, becomes a symbol of unwavering loyalty and companionship. This story imparts the value of loyalty and the special bond between humans and animals, which is honored in Islamic tradition. Moreover, the Quranic references to livestock such as sheep, goats, and camels 
emphasize their importance in human life and sustenance. These animals are often mentioned in the context of God's blessings and the bounty provided to humanity. Their role in agriculture, transportation, and daily sustenance highlights the interconnectedness of all living beings and the gratitude humans should express for these divine gifts. The regular mention of livestock serves as a constant reminder of the blessings bestowed by God and the ethical treatment that these creatures deserve. The moral lessons derived from animals in the Quran are not limited to positive examples. Negative behaviors are also illustrated through animal metaphors. For example, in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, the congregation, those who are entrusted with the Torah but fail to uphold it are likened to a donkey carrying books. This metaphor criticizes those who possess knowledge but do not act upon it, highlighting the importance of not just acquiring but also embodying divine wisdom. The use of the donkey in this context serves as a powerful image of the futility of knowledge without action. Furthermore, the Quran uses the example of the fly in Surah Al-Hajj, the pilgrimage, to demonstrate human weakness and the futility of idolatry. The inability of humans to create even a fly, despite their technological advancements, underscores the greatness of God's creation and the limitations of human power. This comparison serves as a humbling reminder of human dependence on divine power and the folly of equating created things with the Creator. In addition to individual stories and metaphors, the Quran also speaks to the collective existence and purpose of animals. In Surah An-Nur, the light, it is stated that all creatures on earth and birds flying with wings are communities like humans. This verse highlights the concept of animals as communities with their own social structures, purposes and roles within the broader tapestry of life. It fosters a sense of respect and responsibility towards all living beings, recognizing them as integral parts of God's creation. The emphasis on animals in the Quran also extends to their role in the natural order and the ecological balance. The Quran frequently mentions the natural instincts and behaviors of animals as signs of God's wisdom. For instance, the instinctual migration of birds, the way bees construct hives, and the social organization of ants are all presented as examples of divine guidance in nature. These behaviors are seen as manifestations of God's knowledge and power, encouraging humans to observe and learn from the natural world. Overall, the Quran's extensive references to animals serve multiple purposes. They provide moral and spiritual lessons, symbolize various virtues and vices, and highlight the intricate and purposeful design of creation. Through these references, the Quran encourages believers to reflect on the natural world recognize the signs of God in all creatures, and fulfill their ethical responsibilities towards them. The stories and metaphors involving animals enrich the Quranic narrative, making it a holistic guide that encompasses all aspects of life, both human and non-human. The Quran, as a divine scripture, often employs the natural world and its inhabitants to convey profound spiritual and moral lessons among these, the references to insects are particularly notable for their depth and richness. Despite their small size, insects in the Quran are portrayed with significant roles and attributes that teach believers about diligence, cooperation, humility, and the marvels of divine creation. Three insects in particular, bees, ants, and spiders, are highlighted in the Quran, each serving as a vehicle for wisdom and guidance. The bee is mentioned in Surah An-Nal, the bee, which derives its name from this industrious insect. Bees are celebrated for their remarkable production of honey, a substance with healing properties. The verse states, And your Lord inspired the bee, saying, Take for yourself dwellings in the mountains, and in the trees, and in what they, humans, construct. Then eat from all the fruits, and follow the ways of your Lord laid down, 
for you. There emerges from their bellies a drink, varying in colors, in which there is healing for people. Indeed, in that is a sign for people who give thought. Quran 16, 68, 69. This passage highlights several key aspects of the bee's existence that are worth contemplating. First, the inspiration or guidance given to the bee is a direct indication of divine providence. Bees are shown to operate under God's command, following intricate and precise paths to create honey. This notion of divine guidance extends to humans, reminding believers that just as bees follow the pathways laid out for them, humans too should adhere to the divine guidance provided in the Quran. Second, the bee's ability to transform nectar into honey, a substance with various colors and medicinal benefits, illustrates the miraculous aspects of creation. The complex process of honey production involving pollination and the conversion of nectar serves as a metaphor for productivity and beneficial work. It encourages believers to be productive in their lives, to contribute positively to society, and to recognize the beauty and utility of God's creation. The reference to honey as having healing properties underscores the Quran's emphasis on natural remedies and the importance of health. This aligns with Islamic teachings that advocate for the preservation of health and the use of natural resources in maintaining well-being. The bee, through its diligent work and the production of honey, becomes a symbol of hard work, cooperation, and the blessings of nature. The ant, another insect mentioned in the Quran, appears in Surah An-Namal, the ant. The story revolves around the prophet Solomon, who is endowed with the ability to understand the language of animals. As Solomon's army approaches a valley inhabited by ants, one ant warns the others to retreat to their homes to avoid being accidentally crushed. The verse states, Until, when they came upon the valley of the ants, an ant said, O oh, ants, enter your dwellings that you not be crushed by Solomon and his soldiers while they perceive not. Quran 27, 18. Solomon, hearing this, smiles and prays in gratitude for God's blessings. This story of the ant conveys several important lessons. Firstly, the communication among ants and their organized social structure highlight the virtues of community, cooperation, and foresight. Ants work together harmoniously, each contributing to the well-being of their colony. This serves as a model for human societies, emphasizing the importance of collective effort, mutual support, and the protection of the community. Secondly, the ant's concern for the safety of its colony reflects a profound sense of responsibility and care for others. This can be seen as a call to believers to look out for one another, to act with empathy and compassion, and to ensure the safety and well-being of their communities. The story encourages individuals to be vigilant, proactive, and considerate, values that are essential for a harmonious and just society. Solomon's response to the ant's warning is also noteworthy. His smile and prayer of gratitude illustrate humility and recognition of God's grace. Despite his power and knowledge, Solomon acknowledges the wisdom of the ant and the blessings of being able to understand and learn from all creatures. This teaches believers the importance of humility, gratitude, and the recognition that wisdom can be found in all of God's creations, regardless of their size or apparent significance. The spider, mentioned in Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider, is another insect that carries deep symbolic meaning the surah is named after the spider and includes a verse that compares the fragility of false deities to a spider's web. The verse states, The example of those who take allies other than Allah is like that of the spider who takes a home. And indeed, the weakest of homes is the home of the spider, if they only knew. 
Quran 2941. This comparison serves as a powerful metaphor for the frailty of relying on anything other than God. The spider's web, though intricate and marvelously constructed, is fragile and easily destroyed. This serves as a reminder of the impermanence and vulnerability of relying on worldly supports and false gods. The lesson here is clear. True strength and security can only be found in reliance on God. The spider's web symbolizes the transient nature of life and the ultimate futility of placing trust in anything other than the divine. Moreover, the story of the spider in Islamic tradition is also associated with the Hijra, the migration of the Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina. When Muhammad and his companion Abu Bakr were hiding in the cave of Thawr, it is said that a spider spun a web across the entrance, making it appear as though the cave had not been entered for a long time. This led their pursuers to pass by without investigating further, thus saving them. This story emphasizes themes of divine protection, trust in God, and the miraculous ways in which help can manifest. The behaviors and characteristics of these insects, bees, ants, and spiders are not randomly chosen but are carefully selected to convey specific virtues and lessons. Bees represent industriousness, cooperation, and the production of beneficial outcomes. Ants symbolize community, foresight, and the importance of mutual care and responsibility. Spiders illustrate the themes of fragility versus divine strength, as well as the miraculous and protective power of God. Through these examples, the Quran encourages believers to reflect on the natural world and the wisdom it contains. Each insect, in its own way, becomes a sign of God's creativity, power, and guidance. By observing and learning from these small creatures, Humans can gain insights into their own lives, their communities, and their relationship with the divine. The Quranic references to insects thus serve to deepen one's understanding of the interconnectedness of life and the presence of divine signs in every aspect of creation. The Quran, in its divine wisdom, frequently references the natural world to impart lessons of spirituality, ethics, and the inherent interconnectedness of life. Plants and agriculture hold a particularly prominent place in the Quranic narrative, symbolizing sustenance, growth, and the intricate cycles of nature that reflect the divine order. Through various verses, the Quran emphasizes the importance of plants not only as sources of food and medicine, but also as signs of God's generosity, power, and the nurturing aspects of creation. One of the central themes related to plants in the Quran is the concept of divine providence. The cultivation of crops, the growth of trees, and the bounty of fruits and vegetables are repeatedly highlighted as manifestations of God's sustenance and mercy. For instance, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, it is mentioned, it is he who sends down rain from the sky, and with it we bring forth vegetation of all kinds. Out of it we bring forth green foliage, from which we produce grain in clusters, and out of the date palm and its spathes come clusters of dates hanging low and near, and gardens of grapes, olives, and pomegranates, each similar yet varied. Look at their fruit when they begin to bear and the ripeness thereof, Indeed, in these are signs for a people who believe. Quran 699 This verse encapsulates the idea that the growth of plants and the production of food are direct blessings from God, meant to sustain humanity and remind them of His benevolence. The process of rain nourishing the earth and bringing forth diverse vegetation is a recurring motif in the Quran. It is presented as a metaphor for spiritual rejuvenation and the cycles of life and death. In Surah Al-Hajj, the pilgrimage, the Quran states, Do you not see that Allah sends down water from the sky and with it 
we bring forth fruits of various colors, and in the mountains are tracts white and red, of various shades, and some intense black, Quran 35:27. Here, the diversity of plants and fruits emerging from the same water symbolizes the variety of human experiences and the potential for growth and renewal in every soul. Plants and agriculture are also used in the Quran to illustrate the principle of cause and effect, as well as the importance of gratitude. The sowing of seeds, their germination, and eventual harvest reflect the effort required to achieve results and the necessity of patience and faith. In Surah An-Naba, the tidings, it is said, Have we not made the earth a resting place, and the mountains as stakes? And we created you in pairs, and made your sleep a means for rest, and made the night as clothing, and made the day for livelihood. And we built above you seven strong heavens, and placed therein a burning lamp. And we sent down from the rain clouds pouring water, that we may bring forth thereby grain and vegetation, and gardens of entwined growth. Quran 78 6-16 This passage emphasizes the natural order established by God, and the sustenance provided through rain, encouraging believers to recognize and be grateful for these gifts. The Quran often links the agricultural process with the moral and ethical cultivation of the self. Just as farmers must tend to their crops with care and diligence to yield a good harvest, individuals are encouraged to cultivate their character and faith. This is particularly evident in Surah Al-Furqan, the criterion, which states, And we have certainly distributed it among them that they might be reminded, but most of the people refuse except disbelief, and if we had willed, we could have sent into every city a warner. So do not obey the disbelievers, and strive against them with it a great striving, and it is he who has released simultaneously the two seas, one fresh and sweet and one salty and bitter, and he placed between them a barrier and prohibiting partition. And it is he who has created from water a human being, and made him a relative by lineage, and marriage. And your Lord is competent concerning creation, and they worship other than Allah that which neither benefits them nor harms them, and the disbeliever is ever against his Lord, an assistant to Satan. Say, who provides for you from the heaven and the earth, or who controls hearing and sight, and who brings the living out of the dead, and brings the dead out of the living, and who arranges every matter? They will say, Allah, so say, then will you not fear him? Quran 25-50-54 This verse ties the natural processes back to ethical living and the recognition of God's singular authority and benevolence. Additionally, the Quran uses specific plants and fruits to symbolize various attributes and virtues. The date palm, for instance, is frequently mentioned and is considered a symbol of prosperity and endurance. In Surah Maryam, Mary, the date palm plays a crucial role in the story of Mary, Maryam, and the miraculous birth of Jesus, Isa. When Mary is in labor, she is instructed to shake the trunk of the palm tree, from which ripe dates fall for her to eat, providing nourishment and comfort. This incident underscores the provision of sustenance in times of need and the miraculous nature of God's support. Similarly, the olive tree is another significant symbol in the Quran. In Surah An-Nur, the light, it is described, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light is like a niche within which is a lamp. The lamp is within glass. The glass as if it were a pearly white star lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree. Neither of the east nor of the west, whose oil would almost glow even if untouched by fire. Light upon light, Allah guides to his light whom he wills. And Allah presents examples for the people, and Allah is knowing of all things. Quran 24.35 The olive tree here is a symbol of purity, light, and divine guidance. 
illustrating the spiritual illumination that comes from God. The Quran also uses the imagery of gardens to depict the rewards of the righteous in the hereafter. Jannah, or paradise, is often described as lush gardens with rivers flowing beneath, abundant with fruit-bearing trees and perpetual greenery. These descriptions serve as a metaphor for the eternal bliss and bountiful rewards awaiting those who live righteously. In Surah Al-Waqiyah, the inevitable, it is stated, they will be among thornless lote trees, among banana trees with fruits piled one above another, in shade long extended by water flowing constantly, and fruit in abundance whose season is not limited, nor supply forbidden. Quran 56, 27, 33. Such vivid depictions of paradise not only provide hope and motivation for believers, but also emphasize the continuity of God's generosity from this world to the next. In practical terms, the Quran's references to agriculture and plant life also promote environmental stewardship and sustainable living. The emphasis on the beauty and bounty of the natural world encourages believers to respect and protect it. The cultivation of the earth, the responsible use of resources, and the preservation of natural habitats are seen as acts of worship and gratitude towards God. This holistic view of the environment fosters a sense of responsibility and care for all creation, aligning with the broader Islamic principles of balance and harmony. Furthermore, the Quran addresses the consequences of environmental neglect and the over-exploitation of natural resources. In Surah Arum, the Romans, it is mentioned, Corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea by reason of what the hands of people have earned, so he may let them taste part of the consequence of what they have done, that perhaps they will return to righteousness. Quran 3041 This verse serves as a warning about the repercussions of environmental degradation and the ethical duty to maintain the earth's balance. The Quran's extensive use of plant and agricultural metaphors serves multiple purposes. It provides concrete examples to explain abstract spiritual concepts, illustrates the principles of divine providence and gratitude, and promotes ethical and sustainable living. By reflecting on these verses, believers can gain a deeper appreciation of the natural world and their role within it, recognizing that every aspect of creation is a sign of God's wisdom and mercy. Through the lens of plants and agriculture, the Quran offers a comprehensive framework for understanding the interconnectedness of life, the importance of ethical conduct, and the ultimate goal of achieving harmony with the divine order. The Quran, in its divine eloquence, frequently references celestial bodies to illustrate the magnificence of God's creation, to draw analogies, and to provide signs for reflection and guidance. The sun, moon, and stars are not only physical entities in the sky, but also powerful symbols with profound spiritual, ethical, and practical implications. These celestial bodies serve as reminders of God's omnipotence, the precision of His creation, and the interconnectedness of the cosmos, urging believers to contemplate the universe and their place within it. The sun is one of the most frequently mentioned celestial bodies in the Quran, symbolizing light, life, and the regularity of the natural order. In Surah Ash-Shams, the sun, the Quran begins with an oath by the sun and its radiant light, by the sun and its brightness, and by the moon when it follows it, and by the day when it displays it, and by the night when it covers it. Quran 91.14 These verses highlight the sun's role in illuminating the earth and sustaining life. The sun's consistent rise and set exemplify the reliability and orderliness of God's creation, which reflects the divine attribute of justice and balance. The sun's importance in sustaining life is also emphasized in other verses. In Surah An-Naba, the tidings, it is mentioned, 
and made the day for livelihood, and made the night as clothing, and made the day for livelihood, and constructed above you seven strong heavens, and made therein a burning lamp. Quran 78, 10, 13. Here, the burning lamp refers to the sun, highlighting its critical role in providing light and warmth, which are essential for the growth of plants, the regulation of climate, and the overall sustenance of life on Earth. This passage underscores the interdependence of all life forms on the sun, and by extension, on the Creator who placed it in the sky. Moreover, the sun's movement and its role in marking time are essential for the daily and seasonal rhythms of human life. In Surah Yunus, Jonah, the Quran states, It is he who made the sun a shining light, and the moon a derived light and determined for it phases, that you may know the number of years and account of time. Allah has not created this except in truth. He details the signs for a people who know. Quran 10.5 This verse illustrates the function of the sun and moon in measuring time, which is fundamental to the organization of human activities, including worship, agriculture, and social functions. The precise movement of these celestial bodies is a testament to God's meticulous design and the order inherent in His creation. The moon with its phases and gentle light is also significant in the Quranic narrative. In Surah Yasin it is mentioned, and the moon, we have determined for it phases until it returns, appearing like the old date stock. It is not allowable for the sun to reach the moon, nor does the night overtake the day, but each, in an orbit, is swimming. Quran 36-39-40 This passage highlights the moon's cyclical phases, which are essential for the lunar calendar used in Islamic rituals, such as the determination of the months of Ramadan and Hajj. The moon's phases also symbolize the natural cycles of growth, decline and renewal, mirroring the spiritual journey of a believer. The use of the moon in the Quran also emphasizes the importance of light in the darkness, providing guidance and comfort. In Surah Al-Isra, the night journey, it is stated, and we have made the night and day two signs, and we erased the sign of the night and made the sign of the day visible that you may seek bounty from your Lord and may know the number of years and the account of time, and everything we have set out in detail. Quran 17.12 The moon, as the sign of the night, serves as a source of light and a guide for nocturnal navigation and activities reflecting the divine attribute of mercy and guidance. Stars, too, hold a significant place in the Quran. They are described as adornments of the sky and as means of navigation. In Surah Al-Mulk, the sovereignty, it is mentioned, and indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven with stars and have made from them what is thrown at the devils and have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. Quran 67-5 Stars are depicted as both beautiful and functional, serving as celestial markers that help travelers navigate the vastness of the earth and sea. This dual role of stars as both aesthetic and practical elements underscores the harmony and purposefulness in God's creation. Furthermore, stars are used to illustrate the limits of human knowledge and the vastness of the divine. In Surah An-Najm, the star, the Quran begins with an oath. By the star when it descends, your companion Muhammad has not strayed, nor has he erred. Quran 53, 1-2 The mention of stars here highlights their importance in the night sky and serves as a metaphor for guidance and enlightenment. The descending star symbolizes revelation which provides light and direction in the spiritual darkness, affirming the prophetic guidance of Muhammad. The Quran also uses celestial bodies to contrast the permanence of divine creation with the transience of human endeavors. 
In Surah al inshikak the splitting, it is mentioned. When the sky has split open and has listened to its Lord and was obligated to do so, and when the earth has been extended and has cast out that within it and relinquished it. Quran 84, 1-4 this imagery of the sky splitting and the earth changing serves as a reminder of the ultimate power of God and the temporary nature of worldly life. The celestial bodies with their grandeur and stability underscore the enduring nature of God's creation in contrast to human mortality and the fleeting nature of material pursuits. The reflection on celestial bodies in the Quran also extends to the broader cosmic order encouraging believers to ponder the vastness and complexity of the universe. In Surah Ghafir, the Forgiver, it is stated, Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them in six days. Then he established himself above the throne. You have not besides him any protector or any intercessor. So will you not be reminded? Quran 44 this verse calls upon believers to reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth as a sign of God's supreme power and authority. The intricate design and vast expanse of the universe serve as a reminder of the Creator's omnipotence and the insignificance of human power in comparison. The contemplation of celestial bodies in the Quran is intended to inspire awe, humility, and a deeper understanding of one's place in the universe. It encourages a sense of wonder and curiosity, prompting believers to seek knowledge and understanding of the natural world as a means of appreciating God's creation. This pursuit of knowledge is seen as an act of worship and a way to strengthen one's faith, as understanding the signs of God in the cosmos leads to a greater appreciation of His attributes and the purposefulness of creation. The Quran presents a holistic vision of the natural world, emphasizing the interconnectedness of all living beings and the environment. This interconnectedness is not merely a reflection of physical and biological interactions, but also embodies ethical and spiritual dimensions. The Quran teaches that every element of creation has a purpose and is part of a broader, divinely ordained system. Humans as stewards of the earth, have a unique responsibility to maintain the balance and harmony of this system, reflecting the concept of mizan, or balance that is central to Islamic teachings. One of the core principles illustrated in the Quran is the idea that all creatures form communities similar to human societies. In Surah Al-An'am, it is mentioned, there is no creature on the earth or bird that flies with its wings, except that they are communities like you. We have not neglected in the register a thing. Then unto their Lord they will be gathered. Quran 638 This verse highlights the social structures and interactions among animals, suggesting that they too have their own forms of organization and social bonds. This acknowledgement calls for a recognition of the intrinsic value of all creatures and their roles within the broader ecosystem. The Quran also emphasizes the role of humans as caretakers of the earth, endowed with the responsibility to protect and sustain the environment. This concept of stewardship or kilafa is a fundamental aspect of Islamic environmental ethics. In Surah Al-Baqarah, it is stated, And when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a successive authority, they said, Will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood, while we declare your praise and sanctify you? Allah said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Quran 2.30 this verse signifies the trust placed in humanity to govern the earth responsibly with the expectation that they will uphold justice, harmony, and balance. The importance of maintaining ecological balance is further underscored in Surah Arum, where it is mentioned, 
corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea by reason of what the hands of people have earned, so he may let them taste part of the consequence of what they have done, that perhaps they will return to righteousness. Quran 3041 This verse serves as a warning against environmental degradation and the unsustainable exploitation of natural resources. It implies that the disruptions in natural systems are a direct consequence of human actions, urging a return to practices that honor and preserve the integrity of the environment. Moreover, the Quran encourages reflection on the natural world as a means of understanding divine wisdom and fostering a sense of humility and gratitude. In Surah An-Nal, it is mentioned, and he is subjected to you, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, all from him. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. Quran 45.13 This verse invites believers to contemplate the natural world and recognize the signs of God's presence and benevolence in every aspect of creation. Such reflection is intended to cultivate a deep appreciation for the interconnectedness and interdependence of all life forms. The ethical treatment of animals is another significant aspect of the Quranic vision of interconnectedness. The Quran advocates for kindness, compassion, and justice towards all creatures. This is evident in various teachings and narratives, such as the story of the Prophet Muhammad's concern for a camel that was overburdened and mistreated. The Prophet's intervention and his admonishment to treat animals with care and respect underscore the moral imperative to ensure the well-being of all living beings. This ethical stance is rooted in the recognition that animals, like humans, are part of God's creation and deserve to be treated with dignity and compassion. Water as a vital resource is also highlighted in the Quran as a symbol of life and sustenance. In Surah Al-Anbiya, it is mentioned, and we made from water every living thing, then will they not believe. Quran 2130. This verse underscores the essential role of water in sustaining life and the need for its careful and equitable management. The Quran's emphasis on water reflects a broader ecological awareness and the importance of conserving and protecting natural resources to ensure the sustenance of all forms of life. The Quran also speaks to the idea of sustainability and the prudent use of resources. In Surah Al-A'raf, it is mentioned, and eat and drink, but be not excessive. Indeed, he likes not those who commit excess. Quran 731. This verse advocates for moderation and responsible consumption, warning against wastefulness and extravagance. It aligns with the broader Islamic principle of avoiding excess in all aspects of life, promoting a balanced and sustainable approach to resource use. Agriculture and the cultivation of the land are further areas where the Quran highlights human responsibility and the interconnectedness of life. The Quran frequently references the blessings of fertile land, abundant crops, and the cycles of sowing and harvest as signs of divine favor and mercy. In Surah Al-Waqiyah, it is mentioned, Have you seen that which you cultivate? Is it you who makes it grow, or are we the grower? If we willed, we could make it dry debris, and you would remain in wonder, saying, Indeed we are now in debt. Rather, we have been deprived. Quran 56, 63, 67. These verses remind believers of their dependence on God's sustenance and the importance of gratitude and responsible stewardship in agriculture. The Quran's vision of interconnectedness extends to the spiritual realm, where the natural world serves as a reflection of divine attributes and a means of drawing closer to God. The beauty, complexity, and harmony of the natural world are seen as manifestations of God's creative power and wisdom. In Surah Al-Hashr, it is mentioned, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth exalts Allah, and He is the exalted in might, the wise. Quran 59.24
This verse highlights the idea that all elements of creation, through their existence and functioning, glorify God and reflect His attributes. In conclusion, the Quran presents a comprehensive and integrated view of the natural world, emphasizing the interconnectedness of all life forms and the ethical and spiritual responsibilities of humans as stewards of the earth. This vision calls for a deep respect for the environment, compassionate treatment of animals, sustainable use of resources, and a continuous reflection on the signs of God in creation. By embracing these principles, believers can contribute to the preservation and flourishing of the natural world, fulfilling their role as caretakers of God's creation and aligning their actions with the divine mandate for balance and harmony.